Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ. I'm Dr. Ravi Agrari. I'm going to start uh, December 2018 contemporary issues uh, for the environment, ecology, and biodiversity. See, this video is equally useful for UPSC and a part of this for the all state PCS examination, those were held in 2019. See, this PPTs, all the PPTs and videos you save yourself, guys, always. The reason this PPT will also be helpful to you for mains examination. Even the weightage of environmental ecology in the prelims examination is very high, around 15 question. Uh, out of 100 but in this in the mains paper if you go so weightage is only one question in your mains examination so this environment portion is much more important very very important for you prelims you always remember it so these are the chapters those i always uh, say guys in the beginning uh, the reason is this chapter you should prepare in your preparation regarding the environment uh, why these chapters are very important to brief here the reason is very simple guys no ncrt book for the environment and ecology okay so this is the reason you people have a problem to understand which chapters and topics you should discuss even you should prepare so this will help you a lot but the first unit will the basic of ecology related concepts the second is the climate change climatic parameters the unit is the international conference and summits the fourth one is different regulatory bodies laws and acts in india uh, the fifth one is the environmental impact assessment the sixth unit is the solid pollution and solid waste management. The seventh unit is the biomes, natural vegetation, frosty region of India. The eighth one is biodiversity, wildlife conservation and species recovery program. The ninth one is miscellaneous topics. So these are the chapters and a part of this one list is also important. So that list is related to the national parks, centuries, bachelor reserves, coral reefs, mangroves, a lot of things will come there. World heritage sites, conservation sites, extinct species. So this is important. Uh, even this PPT, though I just to describe you here right now, it is uh, this PDF is uploaded here on my Facebook page. So you go and directly you can download from that place. Even a part of this, if you like, you can also follow me on my Instagram profile. So uh, that is the Hornbill uh, Festival. Uh, this topic is connected with the Unit 8 uh, in the Naga land that people celebrate there. So what about the Hornbill uh, Festival? You see, go here. Uh, Union Minister even inaugurated a hugely popular Hornbill Festival 2018 in Kohima and see the day when on that day when this uh, uh, this uh, Hornbill festival celebrated that was also a formation day of Nagaland okay see one more thing guys uh, what about the importance of this Hornbill festival it's a unique opportunities for the state to interact and exhibit their cultural heritage at international level and see the purpose is what Ek Bharat Shresht Bharat okay so it's a true spirit this cultural heritage program is a true spirit behind what Ek Bharat and Sreshd Bharat. See, Hornbill festival is a Naga celebrations, okay, in Nagaland actually. And through the help of these guys, they will try to promote their own richness of a Naga heritage and traditions in that Nagaland areas. See, this day people mostly celebrate between 1 to 10 December in every year. And it is also called as a festivals of festivals. So, Hornbill festival 2018 is being also popular with the name of festivals of festivals see uh, what about the uh, festivals uh, uh, importance even they admired mostly admired and reward the bird for nagas okay that is a very important thing even this one organized by the state tourism and art and culture departments even being also being supported by the union government you know the first time that hornbill festival was established on 1st december 1963 and in that time, it was inaugurated by the Honorable President of that period of time, Dr. S. Radha Krishnan. So, Hornbill Festival brought by uh, S. Radha Krishnan from 1st December 1963 onwards. So, next uh, question is here, contemporary issues, Unit 8 based, Adopter Heritage Project. So, what about the Adopter Heritage Project? You see guys here, actually, uh, the government recently handed a memorandum of understanding to this private limited company that is called Resber Technologies. See, Resber Technology is a kind of provide a, a software solutions and provide the various products related to the software and they will especially help for the operations up to the travel agencies, even providing the IT and software services in travel. Okay, so somehow you understood guys, it's a what? It's a kind of, a, see, what is the project? The Adopt Heritage Project. For the Adopt and the Heritage Project, guys, the government talked to the Resver Technology. What the Resver Technology do? What is the, what are the purpose of Redbird Technology? It is already here mentioned, I just told you. Even through the help of this Redbird Technology, government will try to provide mobile audio guide applications. So mobile, through mobile, you can access a lot of guidance regarding the um, various um, iconic sites 
and that try to uh, even government try to improve uh, tourism in these areas so what about the five iconic sites for that purpose the mobile audio guide application introduced so one you know that is a rajasthan based uh, amar amer fort the next is assam based uh, kajiranga park national park the goa based uh, kolwa beach kerala based uh, kumara com uh, kamara com whatever you pronounce the bihar based the uh, mahabodhi Temple. So, for that purpose, we have a mobile audio called applications introduced. See uh, why this heritage project adopted. Okay, so uh, actually uh, the adopt heritage, apni dharohar, apni pehchan is a Ministry of Tourism based uh, um, based uh, project. Uh, Though it even launched on the World Tourism Day, that is uh, people celebrated twenty seventh September two thousand seventeen. Okay. Uh, this project is a key initiative of a uh, ministry of tourism and that is in the close collaboration with the ministry of culture and archaeological survey of india and they will try to develop a heritage sites or monuments and making this tourist friendly and see to make it tourist friendly guys a lot of facilities that will be uh, best for the tourism guys you have people who will go for the tourism in that areas uh, they will provide them so finally it is good so the project plans to enter the heritage site and monuments and other tourist sites to either you will provide to the uh, private sector companies to manage these tourist areas or heritage sites public sector companies and even individuals for the development of tourist amenities in that surrounding areas okay and finally you know um, the aim of this projects uh, how they will try to increase the uh, provide the various amenities so provide the basic amenities like uh, cleanliness in that areas public conveniences there in that area safe drinking water in that areas ease to access for tourists in that areas signages that areas illumination and wifi type of facility they will provide in that area so finally those people as a tourism uh, as a tourist they will go there they will access a lot of the benefits and finally the people attract there okay uh, the funding projects will be invites involved in the private and the public companies or organization and individuals to adopt the monuments even natural heritage sites and other tourist sites uh, the funding projects in going to be generate by the companies only okay so ultimately the conclusion of this statement is uh, here the ministry of tourism will not give you any funds those private and uh, companies or public companies those uh, uh, will found the authorities in that uh, areas of the tourist spot areas so they will generate their own fundings for the settlement of all the facilities for the tourists okay so here ministry of tourism will not provide any funding so that is the conclusion here in this funding part uh, other information related to this if you go guys the purpose of archaeological survey of india archaeological survey of india i will explain in the last is being identified total 100 monuments as the others is smarak for upgradation of existing facilities or amenities like wifi cafeteria interpretation center braille signage modern toilets in that tourist spot what are the archaeological survey of india the archaeological survey of india founder was alexander cunningham and the purpose the archaeological survey of india is actually in the ministry of culture it is a premier organization for the archaeological researches and productions for the cultural heritage of our nation the prime objective of archaeological survey of india the man, uh, maintenance of uh, all ancient monuments okay so maintenance of uh, all ancient monuments and even all archaeological sites those have a national importance okay up to that level uh, asi is working archaeological survey of india is working now international whaling commission uh, based uh, objective uh, objectives are contemporary issues in this month december month and the uh, you know the uh, article was japan is considering pulling out the international whaling commission so japan is considering pulling out the international whaling commission so why japan is going to pull out from the international whaling commission have some reasons so japan withdraw from this international whaling commission so the reason is uh, why japan withdraw from the international whaling commission even everywhere the people try to save the whale but uh, japan withdrew it japan is not agree with this the reason is here guys uh, the background behind it the tokyo currently observe uh the moratorium but exploit a loophole to kill hundred of the whales every year you know why the hundreds of the whale even the japan even kill the reason is as japan declared as for the scientific purposes as well as for the meat purposes okay the people kill this uh, lot of the whale guys so that is the reason that at international level the people protest against the uh, japan okay 
in the people protest again the japan to japan uh, withdrew from the international whaling commission i hope you have a background this now the question is what about the international whaling commission international whaling commission is an international body set up under international convention for regulation of whaling that is icrw see icrw uh, govern the commercial scientific uh, even whaling practices and around uh, 59 member nations are the member of icrw see uh, this international whaling commission was signed in the washington dc united states in 1946 its headquarters is in Edmonton, that is near to cambridge england and see um, this against the commercial whaling this uh, moratorium was adopted in 1986 which is still continued okay so from 1986 onward the people try to um, save the whale against the commercial purposes okay so this is the overall the safety see uh, there are two places worldwide which are the whale century here UPSC never develop any question but that is a good question for your paper the ones that has been created uh, as a whale century that is a southern ocean whale century which is in the Antarctica area okay the one and the second one is the Indian Ocean whale century which is a tiny island nation is Sicilis in that area the second whale century is situated so you remember for your objective paper where are the whale century that these are two places in the worldwide now we go into the word soil day what about the word soil day guys even every year on 5th december by food and agriculture organization which is the body under un guys it celebrate uh, word soil day okay what about the purpose of the word soil day reason guys the safety and security of the soil overall the soil quality for food security healthy ecosystem and human well-being it is very very important because we due to the soil guys have a productivity due to the soil guys have a lot of uh, what wise of food crisis and everything those people are going to uh, suffer guys it can be solved and that is the reason guys the theme of uh, 2018 uh, of the world soil day is the be the solution to the soil pollution so whatever the pollution in the soil guys you should try to remove it uh, if you go into the historical background of the world soil day so world soil day was firstly recommended in the international day uh, and international day to celebrate the soil was recommended by international union of soil science in 2002 so after this international union of soil science where the soil uh, was a great initiatives uh, at international level for the production and management of the soil yeah, soil conservations uh, to solve the soil pollution problem uh, from 2002 onward the people start to celebrate world soil day uh, now we'll go into the next topic that is the global carbon project the global carbon project means those carbon emission is going to increase in the global atmosphere we will try to reduce that so global carbon project was formed in actually 2001 so it was found uh, formed in 2001 and the purpose to help a science community to establish a common and mutually agreed knowledge base support policy debate and action to slow the rate of increase of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere so overall here will go and decrease the atmospheric temperature uh, the definitely guys it will be become possible when we will try to decrease yeah slow the rate of increase of greenhouse gases see you know guys there is a, some information according to university of east anglia okay what about the information in the last year 2018 those carbon emission the global carbon emission happened guys it was all time higher here from the last earlier year 37.1 billion ton of carbon dioxide emission in 2018 which is very very dangerous and you know what about the india's contribution in those all contribution in this amount guys india stand third position in the world the third highest contributor is here india and see the 10 biggest emitter uh, of 2018 are china us canada india stand third position china stand first position us stand second position russia japan germany iran saudi arabia south korea and canada even china's emissions are 27 percent of the global total level guys and from 2018 onwards if you check 4.7 percent of carbon emission even increased in the earlier year emission of the u.s contribution is around 15 percent of the global level even see under 2015 paris agreement there was some agreement guys the, in, uh, we people will follow that procedure in that way till 21st century those temperature the global atmospheric temperature will rise it will be below 2 degrees celsius cannot exceed 2 degrees celsius temperature in this 21st century and this is the reason we will we are trying to do a lot of uh, uh, we, we adopted a lot of initiatives and see here one more statement is given there guys would need the carbon dioxide emission to decline 50 percent by 2030 and 
even those carbon emissions we are uh, we are trying to generate that will be become zero emissions by 2050 zero emission means guys those emissions are recommended okay that emission will only be there not exceed in the recommended values and on that basis guys by 21st century the global atmospheric temperature will not rise 2 degree celsius okay so it will be below 2 degree celsius that is that will be target of the paris convention agreement those we will try to achieve the next one guys global carbon project as you know 2001 it is it came and tried to reduce the greenhouse gases emissions see one thing the campaign to save the great indian bustard from extinction so what about the campaign to save the great indian bustard from the extinction you see here say guys wildlife organizations have got together to launch a campaign to save great indian bustard which even recent year become as a critically endangered critically endangered under iucn nine category list okay with the total global population of great great indian buster if you see it's around 150 individuals okay that is a population which is very very less in number and that is the reason it is critically endangered in categories see actually wildlife organizations that have launched a campaign the carpet foundation in collaboration with the conservation india and century nature foundation purpose was to save great indian Bustard. See, uh, what about the main reason behind the threats of the great Indian bustard? The one, the degradation and disturbances of the grassland habitat, which is the place for the survival of great Indian bustard. The second one, we are not going to conserve the grassland areas under under policies. So that is the reason, guys. We are going to create a lot of ecological disturbances uh, in that areas. Even the many uh, people are going to kill and the nesting sites where the great Indian buster survive that area is also not under productions even there is a lot of cooperations between different department or stakeholders with the great Indian busted habitat areas even awareness also have an issue the people not being aware about the importance of great Indian buster and safety of it the so indirectly the people also never know and they could not conserve even here the support of local communities are also very very important for the conservation of great Indian busted which is not proper in that area even the livestock overgrowth okay uh, the access the grasses those even these birds and the animals even the eat up guys that even have a deficiencies and a part of the wild egg also kill these type of great Indian bird uh, birds bustards okay even disturbances by the photographers in that areas they also create a lot of disturbances in their own habitat areas so these are the reason main threats behind the great Indian bustards if you go into the great Indian bustards so great Indian bustard is actually under schedule one of Indian wildlife protection at 1972 and and conservation of migratory birds uh, uh, species convention it is mentioned in appendix one okay um, same as convention and in appendix one of the sites uh, as critically endangered according to IUCN. So three informations are given there. So I'm telling you guys uh, under Wildlife Protection Act in schedule one list, uh, CMS convention and in uh, it is also mentioned in CMS convention uh, list that migratory birds uh, con con conservation of migratory bird species is called CMS. So, if migration of the birds is going to be happen, the migratory bird should be protected in that area. So, under CMS list, this this bird is also mentioned. Sorry, Great Indian Buster is also mentioned. Even the uh, site list. Uh, conservation of international trade type of uh, mechanisms uh, under appendix one it is also there uh, IUCN critical endangered it is also there so it is a good question guys in which list great Indian bustard considered so UPSC can ask you one two three four so be safe here it's a factual don't be confused are uh, the species of recovery program under integrated development of wildlife habitat that is called IDWH 17 species recovery program IDWH already started and four new recently added so total 21 species recovery program by integrated development of wildlife habitat right now in India so one of them is a great Indian bustard so great Indian bustard uh, project even mostly uh, important and uh, it should be work a lot in the state of Rajasthan reason in that areas have a lot of problem we are trying to do the lot of secure breeding in that areas and we are trying to protect the areas especially for great Indian bustard total protected areas for the great Indian bustard in India that is the desert national park sanctuary Rajasthan 
रोला पाडू वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी आंध्र प्रदेश कारेरा वाइल्ड लाइफ सेंचुरी दैट इज इन मध्य प्रदेश नाउ द नेक्स्ट वन इज द रिवर डॉल्फिन गो मिसिंग इन सुंदरवन दैट इज अ न्यू रिपोर्ट न्यू इन्फॉर्मेशन इवन केम देयर सो वट अबाउट द न्यू इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द रिवर डॉल्फिन वाई गोइंग मिसिंग इन द सुंदरवन हियर द रीजन इज सेलेनिटी गाइज ओके सी अकॉर्डिंग टू रिसेंटली कंडक्टेड स्टडीज राइज इन सेलेनिटी इन द वॉटर एज आई टोल यू सिस्टम मेक इंडियन सुंदर वन इज वॉट इवन रिजल्टेड इन डिक्रीज ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ गंगा रिवर डॉल्फिन एंड गंगा रिवर डॉल्फिन आर बेसिकली फ्रेश वॉटर डॉल्फिन बट इन सुंदर वन एरिया द डॉल्फिन इज स्टिल देयर बट time to time here the salinity is going to rise and that is the reason dolphin is going to die and there is some information guys you know the dolphin is a national aquatic animal and it was the 2015 very simple and the easiest question came in your paper which is the national aquatic animal is prelims upsc prelims 2015 so it was gangetic dolphin as no longer sighted in even if you go and see the central and the eastern part of sundar one reason there is no longer sighted of dolphin the reason salinity is very high if you go and see the western part of the sundar one here salinity is low so here have a uh, evidences of the dolphin species see what about the river dolphin uh, the some informations given that dolphin is still on the schedule one of indian wildlife protection act it has been declared as a endangered species under iucn category gangetic river species of dolphin you can see in the india bangladesh and nepal areas even the gangetic river dolphin is one of the four fresh water dolphin species in the world and one more guys in those river where the dolphin highly present worldwide you can see the yangtze river the indus river and amazon river okay and gangetic dolphin you already know so these are the locations where the gangetic dolphin you can see the river dolphin and the dolphin is already there so thank you everybody it was a contemporary issues in the december month and the rest of the other contemporaries i will come into the next videos so hope uh, you people uh, will be beneficial from this so don't miss to give a, a comment in your comment box for my next improvement if any error any mistake you you think so it's been happen here so kindly you can uh, mention here in this box uh, okay thank you everybody have a good day bye